So Rec Room just released a new update, and it's a pretty big one. Um, we're, this isn't the only, don't get used to this. Am I sexy? Am I cute? What do you guys think? Do you like my tail? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Anyways though, Rec Room had a new update, and it's a large one. It's even called the Big One Edition. But before we do get started, I just want to say, Crescendo is on Quest and Mobile. It, that's right, we finally have Quest and Mobile support for Crescendo, and when I checked out Crescendo, there was like over 100 people playing it. So enjoy your new Quest, folks. I hear that performance is pretty good, it's actually not too bad to be honest, and it's actually better than Crimson Cauldron for some players. And on top of all of this news with Crescendo, Double Shot is back as well. Who would have thought? But Infinite Shot isn't back yet. Pretty cool stuff, and to be honest, those are our biggest pieces of news inside today's video. But anyways, we have this new Rec'em update called the Big One Edition. Crescendo will be available on mobile and Quest very soon, which it is. Double Shot is back, and a bajillion new chips, and a Smart Circuits recommendation system. Bonky's Inferno is now available to play and to copy, and this is our first major update, and the first update on Nintendo Switch. We've added some performance improving fixes, and you can try them out and say hi to all our new friends. Now for avatars, featuring a special guest, Locomotion. You can now adjust the hat position of all your favorite hats with full body avatars. As part of this update, we also fixed the bugs so you can use Use Legacy Position once again for full body avatars and eventually for Floating Beam. They increased the ranges for your mouse and eyes and nose placement for even more customization, tweaked the way the upgraded bean eyes are mapped from classic bean outfits. They've also been having an issue with blue full body items which have now been fixed and now you'll no longer be blue, daba dee daba die. They fixed the reflection of the S glitch astronaut helmet, and there's new locomotion chips and new locomotion events. Feel free to read them if you want, if you're a circuits nerd. They fixed the animation issue when modifying steering values and using full body avatars in third person. And request slide now has a minimum duration, so you can now change how long slides last. And it also supports infinite slides and changing the request parameters via a second request while sliding. Now they added a bajillion circuits, literally, they were not joking. Feel free to pause and read because I am not reading these out. Let me know if you want me to though, if, you, if you're a circuit nerd. Anyways though, for Rooms 2.0, they say that they fixed a bug where VR players would sometimes be sent to their dorm when saving the room. You wouldn't believe us if we told you what the problem was. Seriously. They also fixed a bug which would cause large objects to rotate a little bit after a room is saved. We think this bug might have friends, so keep your eyes peeled. And they fixed a bug that would sometimes cause objects to fly all over the place when a room was loaded. They informed facilities. They assure us that they've bolted everything down. Replicator returned objects and target objects will no longer be included in results for tag quarry chips, i.e. get first with tag, get all with tag. Rooms 2.0 beta blocker bug fixes, editing now works on animation gizmos, the numeric field with plus and minus buttons now has the correct icons, they added type filtering to properly list in event definitions, fixed a bug where different people wouldn't agree on its scale of small objects, and how small is small really? Well now you'll be able to see for sure. They fixed an error with inventions with chips in Rooms 2.0 not being selected, they fixed a bug where shapes would sometimes appear with the wrong scale when joining a room and fix consistent scaling behavior when scaling multiple shapes simultaneously. They improved tube scaling behavior to be more consistent as well. They fixed a bug where the projectile launcher couldn't hit players and lastly fixed an issue where room sun modified blends time input wouldn't work. Now for general improvements and bug fixes. Crescendo will soon be available on mobile and quest platforms and which it already is and they also fixed a few things on the switch version too. They added a collision cooling and optimized lighting for mobile so yay more frames. They also fixed a bug where the mirror kept shooting every second once fired. Everyone knows that the boss fight was too easy, right? They re-added the Dracula bat animation, now you know who's who, and fixed an issue in the Garden of Solos where the whip would not work in a specific spot. Double Shot has returned for the bow! We worked on a fix for the long bow to allow Double Shot while still preventing Infinite Shot and have added it back. Shout out to Bathaya for helping us bring this back and helping us get it right. Note that Rec Real still won't have Double Shot like always. They added place, a new way to interact with objects. Now screen modes can now more specifically and precisely place objects down instead of eating them or dropping them. They added a new option to choose if other players in the room are muted and or if you are muted to them while in a voice call. The voice call icon in player name tags now changes to indicate if they are in your call or not as opposed to just any call. Some of the Rec'em original rooms would cause a full body avatar or upgraded bean to look like it was animating at double the speed on Nintendo Switch. It looked pretty funny, but if you're reading this, it's already been patched. The addressable world is now 2mm smaller in every direction. 
Reductio ad absurdum. The Rumiverse is a singularity in 16 million years. A few hundred millennia. I, I don't get- I, I said that- Believe it or not, I messed up my last recording. I read patch notes twice. I still don't get this reference. Adjust the language of the notice you'll get regarding Raccoon Plus already being on another Raccoon account. Fix an issue when accepting game invites from your phone's notification screen. They fix some jitters while using share camera selfie on screens and performance issues when using the share camera settings. They fixed a bug where the manipulate tool would scale both ends of a shape if the anchor setting was turned on. Fixed an issue some players had when leaving room 1.0 rooms with spotlights and fixed an issue where circuits are worth breaking spawner gadgets. They fixed a bug that made it so the bow and goblin wand could be grabbed off center when passing between hands, and fixed an issue where VR players could not reposition items when passing between hands, so you can now enjoy your new extendo arms. Lastly, they fixed several issues with viewing other players' outfit items on their profile page. For Rec Room Studio! They added support for cleaning Rec Room Studio rooms, the new material conversion window assists you in converting third-party materials to render properly in Rec Room, added a drop-down menu to select age raid settings for your room, and lastly, fixed an issue where terrain with details, for example trees, would render for those details in magenta when played in Rec Room. And for our last patch note, experiments. They're trying out different things for the distance and volume at which voice calls activate. Let us know what you think! They started an experiment that will autofocus the search bar when you navigate to the player's search page to allow immediate typing, and lastly, started an experiment where new players will see the categories page on the bulletin board in their dorm after completing orientation or until they click the show me all rooms button. They'd love to hear your feedback and don't hesitate to let them know using the new creator forum there. And seriously, this was a big update. So big in fact, it took up half the video basically. But you know what's also big? The sponsorship. Yes, that's right. This video is sponsored by AMVR. Now AMVR had some either comfortable facial interface and face pad, and this actually comes in two different versions. The wider version and a standard version. The wider version is suitable for stock and elite head straps, while the standard version is suitable for halo style head straps. Both widths cushion the face and are easy to wear though. It's also equipped with this Y-shaped ventilation structure, basically getting rid of a lot of light leakage and also keeping your actual VR lenses not foggy during intense gaming session. It also brings for a better VR experience too, by the way, my, my lenses are so clear. Now when opening up this actual product, I had received this height increasing bracket, this breathable facial interface with a nose guard which also helps prevent light leakage, as well as this breathable ice silk pad and this soft PU leather pad as well, and this anti-scratch lens protector cover. Now these two different material cushions, the leather foam is softer, more comfortable, and even sweat proof, while the ice silk face pad has good absorption and breathability which can keep your face fresh and clean. And in my personal experience, having this product, it's super comfortable, I love the different materials that you can choose from, very easy to switch out the face pads too, not to mention the easy installation of actually installing the facial interface into your actual headset, by the way, you just snap it in pretty much. I like it a lot, it's pretty gamer, and I even find it a very interesting that they have two different versions for this actual model. So if you guys are in the market for a facial interface for your VR headset, be sure to check out AMVR's facial interface. And they even have a Black Friday sale, giving you 15% off one item right now. If you buy two, you'll get 20% off, and etc etc. It gets pretty crazy. Uh oh. Uh... Is the ad read over? Uh, okay, let's get back to the video. New featured creator! And as you guys can see, the items that I have on are new. This has never been inside the game before. And that's because there's new UGC, baby. If you decide to go to the store page on your actual watch and scroll down to custom clothing, you'll find some new stuff. We now have this little Kitsune set. We have these blue camo pants and there will be more blue camo stuff. We have this halo, glasses, this made dress set that also comes with this choker. We have these petal blossoms, more blue camo, a white fanny pack, this cute little pink alien cat, then this crab hat, crab shoulder, and crab earring. Then we have this green moth antennae, this blue mini penguin, and lastly this pretty good rotation of UGC items this week. And be sure to let me know what you guys think. Now there's also this new research lab code of conduct as well. Some of you guys are just too crazy. L let's get into it. We have some pretty important news to share with you today. Over the past several months, we've encountered some offensive, disturbing, and just plain mean language in the open-ended responses of surveys in Research Lab. This kind of behavior is not welcome in Research Lab, and it has forced us to release an official Research Lab Code of Conduct and a Three Strikes You're Out policy to accompany it. Please know that we know the vast majority of Rec Room Research Lab members have not been involved in this kind of behavior, and we are immensely grateful for all the feedback you provide us with. But what are these new policies? For the Code of Conduct now, you have to keep it constructive. Sexist, racist, discriminatory, or harassing language or cursing will not be tolerated in survey responses, and if you're not happy with your experiences in Rec Room, we want to hear why, but you need to communicate that feedback respectfully. 
and the fact they even gotta say this is insane to me. Research Lab is still a rec room, and in addition to the above, the broader rec room code of conduct still continues to apply to all the activity and interactions that happen in Research Lab. If you need a refresher on the rec room code of conduct, you can read it there. Now for this three strikes you're out policy, any violation of the above Research Lab code of conduct will result in your rec room account being charged with a strike in Research Lab. You'll be notified via email anytime you receive a strike, and if you accumulate three strikes, you'll be banned for future participation in Research Lab. So what does this mean? We hope this message serves as a reminder that there are humans on the other end of these surveys who read your responses, and they are affected when you use this harmful language. Research Lab Code of Conduct and the Three Strikes You're Out policy are both effective immediately, and from this point on, you will receive a warning email anytime you find Code of Conduct breaking content in your survey responses. Finally, we want to reiterate that the vast majority of Rec Room Research Lab members are not violating the code of conduct at all, and we are thankful for all the feedback you provide and your help in shaping the future of Rec Room. For you, this new policy doesn't change much, and we are releasing it in an effort to make sure Research Lab is the most welcoming community it can be, and not as a punishment. If you have any questions or concerns about this new policy, feel free to reach out to that email, and they'll be happy to answer them. Also, that's insane. Who, who's cussing to the Rec Room Research Lab team, yo? Get a grip! A grip! Is that a glacier? Oh, it's not. Man, I thought this was going to be like the Titanic for a sec. Uh, oh, hey, did you know that I have channel memberships? My channel memberships are essentially just like a Patreon, and people give me money every single month so they can get special perks like getting shoutouts inside of all my videos and stuff like that, and getting sneak peeks to my videos and stuff inside my Discord server. Link in the description. Of course, these people include Greengrass VR, Iron Guy, Zenny, Fire God 82, Baguette, Default Curb, Kobe Fan, Daytrix, Hydro Nolan, The Dragon Boy, Ghastly, Garlic Bread, It's Ready RR, Chase, BBB Burning Owl, Cloud, Netflix 69, and of course, Box David. Thank you for all your love and support. Some of these people have been supporting me for almost almost two years, and honestly, it's insane. I love you. Mwah. And of course, let's get back to the video. Now, if you're interested, Rec Room had also released this little new player guide inside of Rec Room, so if you find yourself to be a new player inside of Rec Room, feel free to check that out. And we had gotten an announcement for December Room Awards, and them being around the corner. For December Room Awards, they're going to keep it chill for December, so you can still earn the Room's 2.0 hoodie, plus bonus tokens and seller swag bubbly, but be prepared for some potential big changes to the program in the new year, though. We will do our best to communicate them with you early and often. November reward boxes will be sent between December 2nd and 6th, and like usual, rooms will be evaluated based on their ability to engage users through tokens and or time spent, and you can check out the current metrics and rewards below. I'll have the link to that inside the description below, and I just got this box, calling me a cute anime girl. This is the last time I'm wearing it. And would you believe me or not if I said that that was all the news that we had for today's video? Big, big major news for today's video, though. Be sure to let me know what you guys think. I'm very interested to hear your guys' comments. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, use my code in game. If you didn't know I had a code in game, I really do appreciate it. It supports me a lot. And in case you guys haven't had your fix yet and want more Rec Room news, then of course, I got a new video that literally came out yesterday talking about a leaderboard update and Rec Room's weird little split test with FPS. Basically, capping FPS at 45 FPS for screen mode players and mobile players and stuff. Is Rec Room trying to make your game run like poop? Who knows? But find out at that video. Check it out, people. Check it out. I know you want to check it out. Anyways, peace out.